Hi everybody, welcome to the YouTube Coyote Calling Academy channel. Today I'm going to do a video, kind of go over some hand calls, um, rabbit distress on a hand call, kind of where to start, how to get some emotion, uh, basically what I'm doing when I'm hand calling. I will do videos later on, we'll get into some on howling, pup distress, pup whines, bird distress, things like that, but today I'm just going to stick with just some rabbit distress, the basic kind of simple where everybody's kind of starting out with hand calling, that's pretty much what they're going to use. I use the rabbit distress on hand calls probably 90% of the time. Um, when you're calling, <clears throat> the higher or closer out to the end of the reed that you are, the higher pitch is going to be, the farther down you go the deeper, raspier, growlier, you're going to get your call. Everybody is going to run the call a little bit different. I run the call with the reed up, and I use, when I'm doing a rabbit distress, or, or all of my prey distress, I use my top lip for pressure on there. I have seen some guys that run the call with the reed down, and they're using their bottom lip or bottom teeth to run the call. I cannot control it as well with my bottom lip or or teeth, either way, whatever you're going to do. I can't control it as well with my bottom lip, so I run the call with the reed to the top. To me, that's the proper way, I guess, but I don't really think it matters too much. Just whatever works for you and however you're going to get the best sound. I've heard some guys that sound really good that run their call upside down. To me, doesn't mean that it's right or wrong. Just that's how they run it. That's what's comfortable for them. So figure out what works for you in that aspect of it. So I, I like my, all of my calls, pup distress or my rabbit distress, things like that. I like them a little higher pitch. So I usually stay about midpoint or from the midpoint of the reed out to the tip. I don't usually go very deep down the reed very often, every now and then. In the middle of the sequence, I will just to add a little bit of, a um, little bit more, oh crap, into the call, I guess, if I need to or whatever. But for the most part, about midpoint and out to the tip is where I typically like to stay. Now, I say a lot that you need to get emotion into your call, and where that's coming from is your diaphragm quivering your diaphragm, growling into your voice into the call, and as I run through, I'll, I'll run through a couple different ones just so you can hear the different sounds, but as I go through, I'll kind of break it down as to when I'm growling or when I'm quivering my voice or my diaphragm into the call so you can kind of hear and tell exactly where I'm doing that at. There's no set cadence or set... Um, time to do any of it or anything else just just do it let it go let it flow naturally the way I try to explain it to people on how you want your call to sound is most most people have kids or have been around somebody with kids at a very young age like a baby or anything so it's kind of weird to think about it like that I guess but to me that's how I learned and how I found it best for me to explain it to people is think of like when I first started calling I just had just had a baby well my wife just had a baby but we had just had a newborn so I was trying to figure out how I wanted how to to get the most realism out of it and I started paying attention I'd heard some people talk about you know recording their kids crying um things like that and it kind of made sense that when your your baby starts crying they're making a distress sound so I started kind of paying a little bit of attention to that and how when my daughter would start crying how she was start off you know just just a, a little just kind of barely start crying and then if you didn't get to her right away or like when she was sleeping and she would kind of start to wake up and start crying 
Sometimes if you wait a little bit, she'd go back to sleep. Sometimes she would just get pissed off and really start crying and going crazy. So I started watching that and playing with that into my call. And that's how I'm trying to trying to make my call sound is something too similar to how she was crying. So the the longer your distress was going, the more urgent it became, the louder it was, the faster. Um, things like that is kind of how I try to make mine sound. So try and think of whether it's your dog or um, like go to the animal shelter and the way that some of the, the animals act in there or when you have a litter of puppies and they kind of get into a little scuffle about how they kind of sound there. Your, your kids, that was great for me to be able to mimic that um, distress cry to my hand calls. That's what worked best for me. So when I sit down on stand, I don't start out very loud, very crazy. I just, I start out real subtle, um, kind of softer, and go gradually increase from there. So when I'm starting out, I start, start out kind of sounding something like this. Okay, now you kind of hear the, the whans in that. They're, they're a little longer than some people might might start out. But I kind of figure it as when they an animal first starts going, that's when they're Granted, they'd been running, or hopefully they'd been running from whatever, but their lungs are a little fresher, their voice isn't, you know, if you yell a whole lot, your voice gets scratchy, things like that. So you're able to carry that out, and then the longer that you're going, the more tired you're getting, you're running out of air, your voice starts getting scratchy and everything, so you're going to shorten that up a little bit. So I start out kind of longer whans, in there and that's what I'm thinking that I'm saying in my head is wah wah and I'll drag that out at first to the beginning and then as I get going it'll get a little faster a little shorter on the wahs and I'll start inflicting more of whether it's my diaphragm that I'm in quivering inflicting into the call or growling into it to get that emotion in there so I'll start out for a little bit not no set time do I pause for 30 seconds 45 seconds anything like that I just whatever I guess gut feeling whatever I'm I feel like doing that day that's the one thing that I really like about hand calling is you can call the same spot and you're never ever gonna sound exactly the same as you did last time so it just it changes that up a little bit and it's it's never the same. That's one thing that I really like about hand calling is no matter if somebody else hunted that spot that day, the day before, the week before, even if they hand called, you're not going to sound the same. It's very hard for you to sound the same every time that you hand call, even if you're using the same one. It, it can sound similar, but it's not always going to be the same. The cadence, the pitch, whatever is usually going to be changing which is the most realistic. So after I wait a little bit and I go into my next series, I'm probably going to pick up the pace a little bit, probably get a little louder, a um, little bit more emotion into it. So when I do this series, I'll quiver my voice. You should be able to hear that in the call. Some of them are real long, some of them is a real short wham, and you can hear that shakiness in there. That's coming from my diaphragm. Okay, that's all coming from my diaphragm. You can also do the same thing. You're going to get a little different sound. It's going to be a little more growly, but you can do it in your voice if you 
can't get your diaphragm to shake and quiver like that, you can still do it in your voice. <laughs> Okay, that's all from just growling, humming type thing out of my, my voice and my throat. It's just a, uh, 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 just something like that is all I'm doing there. Changes the sound of pitch. If you notice, I'm moving my hand. That changes the back pressure going into the call. Will change your sound. Um, same thing, if you cup your hand over the front of the call, you're going to be changing that pressure in the call to get a different sound. Um, I, I can't give you technical terms, whatever. I'm not a call builder by any means. But it, it does, you can hear a difference in the call from to and then Just the way it muffles it, changes all that. You want to inflict all of that into your call. Another thing about putting your hand over, if you're moving your hand here, you can just put your hand in front of it. It kind of muffles that sound a little bit, but it, it's also going to keep that movement of your hand calling your hand moving. It's going to kind of block that a little bit. So, <clears throat> I personally, I like to run, I like the way that Travis Bills calls. Um, so I run nothing but Coyote Creek, Pinoy Piper. This is my favorite call by far. It's the Pinoy Piper CQ. Hands down my favorite call. Um, for beginner, a call that I recommend a lot is Travis's Black Death. It's got a lip. I don't know if you can see. It's got a lip on the edge of the tone board. And that... Is a it's a good starting point for a beginner that lip he put in there to sit on your lip to just rest kind of like that it's a good starting point on where you need to start out on the call as you you can take that call and put your lip here and then your top lips here as you angle the call up your lip slides down you bring it down it slides out to the tip so rather than trying to work that call there you can just kind of change it by rocking the call up and down this call is a very good beginner call it's it's a little louder than the cq it's got a bigger exhaust barrel um it's a little louder but it's got a different sound to it just a little bit different sound um, this is Travis's Voodoo, and it's got an even different sound than these two. So, they all sound a little different. They all got a different pitch, a different tone to them. Every call maker builds their calls a little different, so find find what works for you, what fits you best, whether it fits in your hand, what is easier for you to blow. Some calls are going to be a little harder to blow. It's going to take a little bit more air. Some of them aren't going to take as much. So find a call that fits you, that works for you. What works best for me may not work for you at all. Um, I have some calls that I cannot get to sound halfway decent. It's just it's nothing against the call maker or the call. It's just how I run them and how much air I use. I just can't get them to really sound good or sound how I want them to sound. So find find a call that works for you. Practice with it, um, whether it's in the truck, driving to work, driving home from work, just driving around town. You might get some weird looks, but whatever. Um, another thing when you're calling to change the pitch, you're going to change the amount of pressure that you're putting on the reed, whether it's with your lip or your teeth. When I do my prey distresses, I use my lip. When I do puff distress, I will use my teeth on the reed. It's just how I can control it and get the sounds that I want out of it. So play with that a little bit, whether you're going to use your teeth or your lip. 
Now, if you use your lips, some calls, some are more than others, but that reed vibrating in there will tickle your lip and make it kind of hard for you to stake constant on that until you figure that out a little bit. Um, the biggest thing I can say is just don't get discouraged. Um, hand calling takes a little bit of learning, takes a little getting used to, but it is very, very effective. And it's very satisfying. There's not, other than the biggest rush for me and the the most, I guess, satisfying for me out of it is hand calling a coyote in and then killing them with the shotgun. That is, at that point, I feel like I have outsmarted them to the best of my abilities and done everything right, whether it's my setup, my calling, and everything else to get them into shotgun range with a hand call it is, it's very satisfying there's not much more satisfying than calling them in with your sounds granted you don't make the hand call but nobody's going to run that hand call the same as you so it, it's very satisfying to know that you did all the steps right got everything done when you call them in and kill them with a hand call and a shotgun on that set you did everything right and it's very, very satisfying. That's what, that's what I'm trying to do on everything. The more I hand call, the more I like it. When I first started, I tried hand calling a little bit, but I wasn't having the luck, so I kept going back to the e-caller. And finally, what did it for me was I was out, and we were actually contest hunting, and my e-caller wouldn't work. It got wet, wouldn't work. So I had no choice but to hand call. So that was it. And it, it was working that day. It was on. They were coming. And it was a rush. So the, the, the longer I've been calling, the more and more and more I switch to running hand calls. It's just, it's that much more of a rush. Um, so... You know, don't get discouraged. Stay after it. Practice all you can. If anybody out there, feel free to shoot me a message. I'd be glad to answer anything that I can. There are a ton of people out there. There are a lot better killers than me. Find them. Get a hold of them. Most 90% of guys are very willing to help and get, get you going in the right path. But the biggest thing that I can say is get all the emotion that you can into your call whether it's from your diaphragm, your throat, the air pressure, and find a, find a call that works for you. Don't go off of just anything I use. Don't go off of what so-and-so over here uses because it might work for them, but it might not. It might not fit you. It might not work for you. Everybody's got more air, less air. It's going to take, some calls take a lot of air to get any sound out of. Some calls don't take any air at all. You don't want to be running out of air and exhausted after just a couple stands of hand calling. So find that call that works for you. There's tons and tons of great calls out there. There's there's one for everybody somewhere. You're just going to have to find it. Um, so with that, I hope somebody picked up something out of this. Like I said, feel free to shoot me a message if anybody has any questions. And good luck hunting, everybody. God bless.